there's so much information now uh, versus it being kind of in a drought 40 years right. ago or 50 mm -hmm. years ago. Or, you know, the further back you go, the more that, that was the case. Um, and so for me, it's also, yeah, what's, is there something specific that can be contributed rather than just writing for the sake of writing? To me, pragmatically, we've lost, in the West at least, this very critical connection that would allow us to be well. Um, and I think that magic is a brilliant tool for that, but it's not often framed that way. If we look at the things that we're supposed to want, most of, of us really probably wouldn't want them if we really hadn't, if that hadn't been hammered through the media, if it hadn't been hammered through these kind of tales of this is what having a good life looks like. And so I think this was kind of one of those root things is like, what can I do to see myself differently? Mm -hmm. uh, and again, realizing that this is not about truth. It's not about uh, it being a lie. It's about none of those things. It's just accepting that all this stuff is constructed. Um, and taking, you know, control of that construct. Hello and welcome to the Spirit Box podcast, where we explore folklore, magic, the world of the spirits, and everything in between. For episode 62, it's my great pleasure to welcome back to the Spirit Box, author, magician, and talismanic jeweler, Aidan Wachter. In this show, we discuss weaving faith and overall Aiden's writing process, his approach to writing and how he constructs books, the importance of flow, and indeed how his work is made up of broken pieces which tend to make sense at a later point, and how much uh, his work with the spirits is involved in his writing. And it's, it, yeah, it makes for a great conversation, really interesting stuff. And we discuss magic as a tool for altering probabilities and the past and, and making desired events more likely to occur through ritual and, and manipulation of, of the mind and your personal world. And, and the point here is, is, is waking up from sleepwalking, from living someone else's life and starting to live your own. Aiden's work helps anchor us that we can be our own real time biographers and write a, frankly, a better story. And then he also gives us a better toolkit in, uh, for doing so in both six ways in the aforementioned weaving faith. So it's good stuff. This, this, is a, this is a strong work. And if you're not familiar with Aiden's work, it should give you a good foundation as to what you can expect. Now in the plus show, we discuss naming and coming of age and the feral self. I also managed to go down a rabbit hole around my confusion with billionaire's obsession with super yachts. I, don't ask me how I got there. I'm not even sure how I did. But I'd say it's worth the Patreon sub just for that alone. Um, and speaking of Patreon, a quick shout out and thank you to new Ank member, Kate Holt. Kate, thank you for your support. It's greatly appreciated. Now, this is normally the part where I ask you to share your stories in the voicemail link below or on various social media platforms. But today I'd like to ask you to do me a solid and give the show a positive review and a rating. It really helps a lot and uh, helps more people find me. So I'd really, I'd really appreciate it. Now, aside from uh, that, if you want to hear more of Aiden, do check out the great show he recorded recently with Man Aelin on the Real Witches of the End Times podcast. It's a great show, and they, they explore some fantastic conversation points. I forgot to mention that uh, the Kickstarter for the Sigil Engine is coming, and that will be with us relatively soon. Myself and my colleague David are working through our promotional material to help frame what the Sigil Engine is, app is going to do and really kind of visualize that for people. And I gotta say, it is looking fucking cool. I mean, I would say that, but I am quite quite pleased with myself, to be frank. Right, I think that's enough preamble. Let's get into it. Let's go. Aiden, it's, it's so lovely to see you, and uh, I'm just really lovely to have you back on the show. So thank you very much. Um, Coming back uh, to, to have a chat. So you're, you're welcome. You're wel welcome home, Aiden. Welcome home. Well, thank you very much. It's super good to be back. I was I did the same thing you, I think, did before we got on, which was look to see how long ago it was we talked. And we talked right before <laughs> the last book came out. So. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I guess to, 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 to get things started and kind of what we're going to chat about is really uh, 
Weaving Faith, um, which I think was about to be published when, with the last time we spoke. I think it was, it was um, I think it might have been in pre-order, yeah. but hadn't actually started shipping yet. I think yeah. it was going to start shipping like two weeks after or something. Yeah. And um, I, I've been going through um i've been going through the reviews uh of it on goodreads and what have you and and it, it's it's really been it's really been warmly received you know and, and i just seeing kind of like consistently um you know you you get high esteem and high praise from 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 people in in our our culture and and uh in our in our um culture as, as it were you know um mm -hmm. and um one of the things that that I see kind of again and again as as a as a theme, while there's this hugely deep tools in here, you know, like seriously kind of you know tools that will help you like reach back through time, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, really help digest negative experiences that have maybe put your life on an arc that you don't want to be on and course correct. It's still put in a way that's that people can can, can digest and and. Um, um, but but that they, they can process and, and take away and work with, and and I, I kind of wanted to ask you about that. Is that that seems to be a knack that you have that you can get these like ex extremely deep and meaningful, um, I guess you know almost human condition problems that and and then articulate them in a way. That's that's people can take away with and kind of do start that process that day, you know. Yes. Whereas a lot of um a, a lot of work in that uh, people get tasked with or mapped out to 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 affect change in their lives and bring them to, into a better place, be it through 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 magic or, or other means, I tend to be you know extremely labor intensive. Uh, mm -hmm. Not to say this isn't a labor intensive, but but I mean I guess protracted is 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 what right I'm about. and. You know, point out, can I ask you, where does that knack come from? How do you cut through all of this? I guess oh, man, that's, a, that's such a good question. Um, and it's actually a really good question to ask right now. I'm like, uh, right now I've started and gotten about between 10 and 15,000 words in through four different starts to the next book that are utterly different. <laughs> um, and the, this little one that I'm in now is the first one where I can see that. Like, okay, this is working, right? I don't know where that comes from, except that I have this really deep question that's kind of the continuing question that I have about magic and about just kind of being a human, which is we do these things and we don't usually go in and go, okay, what does this tell me about the world and about myself if this kind of magic works? or if any kind of magic works, really. Um, and so I think I really kind of hunt that. I think that that's the thing that kind of maybe opens that up, is I really want to go like, okay, that worked. Why did it work? Because a lot of people have been throwing out uh, some great stuff about that. I had no idea. Like, oh, this is very similar in some ways to a piece of this kind of therapy. I don't know shit about therapy. Uh, <laughs> You know, and I'll go and dig in a little deeper now that that when people point it out, and I go, okay, I can see what they're saying, um, and so I can kind of see how that uh, that form of, of work developed for them, right? The people that created it, um, and so I think it's just that it's I think it's asking the question of what is this? What's it do to me? What then maybe is best use? Um, and how do you make it? Um, accessible especially because i don't really write about anything that's quick fix like everything is what i think of as long game stuff right and that's not really the nature of our current <laughs> media culture at all right uh so i'm not sure where it comes from but i think that that's how that actually plays out as i'm always looking at what's the what's the most direct path in to get this to make sense to somebody um, without it being, and not have it be obscured. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think it's it's a real knack. Uh, like it's it just it just feels so balanced in, in how you you can achieve that. You know, um, because they are you know you're talking about extremely complex things, you know, mm -hmm. um, and life changing things. And 
And it's, it's, I find it really interesting as well that you kind of, you, you, you know, absolutely kind of cards on the table. These are, these are a long, it's a long game. This is a long play. This, mm-hmm. is, an, this is an investment that you're not going to see a return for, for, for some time. It doesn't mm-hmm. come across like that. Right. Because you know, that is a real, that can be a real barrier to people. You know, they're oh. like, well, you know, okay, for, in order for me to achieve X, I got to meditate under a waterfall for three years. You know, I'm not doing that. You know, people are just out straight away. And like, you don't get that sense of kind of like, this is, this is going to be so protracted that I, I'm almost defeated before I begin. Now, that helps, I guess, you know, you might want to think about that in terms of a filtration method, but you don't, and your work doesn't. And I really like that because you're actually kind of, you're like, get on the bus. Come on, let's, 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 let's all do it. <laughs> and I, I, I really, I just, I, I think that's really special. I really do. And I think that's why you get so much warmth in, in, in the, in the, the broader community, you know? Um, mm-hmm. And to, to, to that end, um, with the, the, the second book coming out and the second book being again, like a, a set of pretty personal tools for people to, 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 um, well, we were discussed what they can do with them, but, um, I mean, have people changed in terms of how they reach out to you, how they communicate to you? I imagine you, you must have a lot of um, questions. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot, you know, it's, it's been interesting because when I put Six Ways out, the first, I got a lot of really excellent uh, folks reaching out and kind of going, thank you for putting out a book that isn't kind of telling me I need to force my experience into a particular pattern, right? Um, to have it be valid. Um, which is something that I'm aware goes on and it's something that I've always kind of fought against. Um, and so it was never something that stopped me from doing anything. And most of the people who reached out, it didn't stop them either, but it kept them out of the community. Um, cause they really didn't feel comfortable saying like, yeah, I'm not going to do that piece cause it's just not appropriate. And this is the thing that's really doing it works for me. Um, with weaving fate, what has happened is a lot of folks have come in and said like, I started the work and it's immediately producing kind of radical shifts that are super beneficial um, and being really excited to continue. And so that's, again, that's kind of speaks to what you were talking about first. Um, And, uh, you know, it's, uh, to me as, 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 as an author, that's the, kind of thing that you hope for is that you hope that somebody can actually take it and use it. And that's, I mean, I guess that that's the main thing. You never really know. Like again, when you're writing these kind of like, or putting out these kind of long game processes, um, you don't know how many people will actually go, okay, this makes enough sense that I'm going to try it. And that has actually been very good. There's been a lot of folks that have been very straight up and who are still doing the work now that they've had the book for six or eight months and going like, no, 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 I see why this is a long game, even though I got some pretty extreme uh, shifts. uh, I can see why you suggest that six months is kind of the break in period to really know what you can do with it. You know, so it's interesting. And in terms for for you, um, since, since obviously this is your, your, your second title out, you know, how how's it how has it changed your say your personal practice? You know, um, like you, I, I guess this is an assumption for, for, for me, but like you know, you're going at this from a, from a different perspective. So you've got your own personal relationship with your practice and the spirits mm-hmm. you engage with. But actually, now you've got a whole heap of people who are say emulating your practice or look towards you for. Um, you know, I guess inspiration or uh, or, or methodologies to to, mm-hmm. to explore. You know, has that changed your personal practice in any way? That's a really interesting question too. Um, you're good at these interesting questions. <laughs> um, I don't think that it has. Um, I think what it's done is I've always been pretty comfortable just saying like. I don't know, <laughs> you know, I'm not, uh, that's not one of those places. I have all sorts of ego traps. That's not one of them. <laughs> uh, so, uh, 
people do come in and go like, well, could I do this whole thing? And it's like, you could, but I don't have any idea what that would output, you know? Yeah. Um, just like, I don't really know how, what this will output. I know what I've seen with friends that have done it. Um, and I know my own experience, but I, has it actually changed what I do? I don't think so. Um, you know, with the exception of it's kind of shifted how I think about writing. Right. Um, you know, it's kind of, if you get one book that's pretty well received, that's great. And if you get two, then you're like, whoa, okay, that's weird. Um, and cool, but weird, <laughs> unexpected. Um, and then it kind of does drop something on there of like, okay, I don't know how far I get to run with writing books people <laughs> like, but we're going to see uh, and or find useful, you know, that's the only thing that's kind of changed. And then it's also funny because now I have enough, whatever it is, I've got 120,000 words out there and then mm -hmm. close to 50 hours of podcast interviews. Uh, so it's how do you kind of sort, you sort 30 years of experience to go, what's a useful tool? Cause I'm always, that's my thing is I, yeah. I, I want to share useful tools. Yeah. Um, that's really my only kind of criteria. Yeah. I, I see a lot of things that way. I see a lot of things a way of kind of going very simply what's, what's useful to me in terms of my own progression, but also kind of like, you know, I'm a real believer in, in, in like service to others. Yes. You know, and and I, I don't really have a particular philosophy around it. I just think that's a good thing. You know, I think like, I agree, it's just I generally a good thing. That. Yeah. We can agree on that. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> um, and like when I think about it, like like this show, this 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 show serves two purposes. For me, again, it helps me kind of uh, explore my understanding of the world, or more broadly, my lack of understanding of the world. You know, and, and ask you know, cool people like yourselves, kind of about your view on things. But also, I, I see it, it it also as a way of like adding to the gen general body of knowledge that's out there, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like to, to your point about like your 120,000 words and, and 50 hours of podcasts, that's adding to that kind of body of knowledge, you know, of, 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 of indexable knowledge for people to kind of look at and kind of explore certain topics. And that, that accessibility, I think is a really important point. And I think that really does come down to why your, your work has so much momentum because mm -hmm. it seems to be at the heart of it without losing any of the kind of the, 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 the depth and meaning and, and, and impact, you know, which yeah, is, is a, it's a really, it's a, yeah, I, I'm just like, I'm in great admiration, admiration of that balancing act. I really am like, you know, like, uh, it's hard. Writing's fucking hard, right? No. It is fucking hard. Uh, you know, I think we talked about this before yeah. too. It's like, I have no background in it. Um, you know, I, uh, I left school very early. I did not get past the first couple levels of yeah. like, if you were to ask me how you structure an essay, I don't know. It's an honest thing. I know they told me that once I was very high and then I left school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, it is, it's like, and then if you really are, I have, a. I I was talking to somebody who is a really great guy who um is not who's trying to find his voice as a writer mm -hmm. um and it's it's really hard um and it's really hard to then kind of be consistent with that and not let whatever the kind of events of the day or the year or the week kind of overshadow that right but um i appreciate your your, your thinking all of that that's very kind um but i do think it's yeah it's it's the magical world is fascinating because there's so much information now uh, versus it being kind of in a drought 40 years right. ago or 50 mm -hmm. years ago or, you know, the further back you go, the more that, that was the case. Um, and so for me, it's also, yeah, what's, is there something specific that can be contributed rather than just writing for the sake of writing you know mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. i think that that's the thing that makes writing for me hard is it's i really that's really what i want i want i want to be able to do that i want and i know that not everything is going to be suitable it's not going to be appropriate for everybody or helpful to everybody but um maybe that's the thing if there's something that's shifted it's it's i have a clear idea of who um who can hear me 
right? That I've gotten enough feedback yeah. from people and that's been in some of its detailed enough that I can kind of go, okay, so I was right about that being more important to me and then maybe the few people that have experienced that, you know? And so that's always, because it's a question. You don't know if you're gonna throw something out there that it's useful. Yeah. Um, you think it is. Um, you have reason to believe that it is, but you don't really know until people that pick it up find it useful. Yeah. And and in terms of of um of when you're writing in the in the process, um, like how much of it is is a sense of like just it kind of just flows, just comes. You know, I know it's 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 not fiction, it's not a story, but you use a lot of stories in mm -hmm. in how you structure um mm -hmm. explaining devices explaining techniques you know I, I i i think one of the things i'm interested in is is how much of that is kind of in a state of flow or actually is it is it pretty structured in terms of how you're going to break down certain points. i wish it was more structured <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> i've tried it doesn't work um yeah for me it's like it's like so i'll break this i'm i just uh, as, as we talked about before i started i think maybe it's not re-recorded i don't remember but um i'm a uh, functionally maybe 10 percent into the next book after four different tries to start it mm -hmm. and that was because they were not flowing the information was there all that but it was not right it wasn't it wasn't going to be a it wasn't a book that i thought would be worth reading um and bringing magic to bear, I kind of sat down and talked to the allies and said like, okay, I know what we're trying to do here, but I'm not getting the, mm -hmm. I don't have the shape of it. Mm -hmm. And that would be really helpful. <laughs> um, and a couple nights later, I woke up at two in the morning and was like, oh, here's the shape. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> grabbed mm -hmm. the laptop and sat up for two hours and kind of started writing yeah so for me that's really how it goes it's a lot of flow it's a lot of um broken up pieces mm -hmm. that i don't really know how they fit together until later weaving fate was a little more controlled because it had fewer moving parts right but um this one is a little closer to six ways where there's a lot coming out mm -hmm. um and I do, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's super woo to say it, but I really do feel like the allies are heavily involved in all the magical work that I do yeah. um, and kind of guide what is, um, I think they're kind of the thing that filters me from just jabbering uh, of like, no, 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 that's a lovely <laughs> thousand words, but they're not yeah. useful here. It's like, okay, I can accept that. <laughs> I can see that. Uh, or I'd get just kind of continuously hammered with, particular language or imagery until I understand it. Okay. Um, Cause that's kind of the experience for me too. A lot of the time I'm like, why is this relevant? And until mm -hmm. it's actually laid out in a deeper level, I don't know usually. Uh, it's, it's, it's interesting that you, you talk about kind of like certain language uh, and, and that kind of in the sim, in the symbol, uh, symbolic language of, of dreams as well. Mm -hmm. It does it like in reading through your work, like that there's such memorable metaphors, you mm -hmm. know. Um, and I think that's one of the, the real potent things about it is like, you know, the corridor, the black book, the fever stone, you know, they are they're metaphors, but they really manage to in, in, encapsulate what you're talking about you know, mm -hmm. in, in, in a kind of almost meme-like form in their condensed meaning, you know, and, yeah. and, and is, is, is that received to a degree as well? I think it, that is definitely received to a degree. Um, Cause again, it's kind of in a place, I'm in a place where I've done a lot of different kinds of work, but I can't usually see how it goes together mm -hmm. and I can't necessarily see how it, how to share it um, in a way that is cohesive uh, or, you know, coherent, whatever. Um, and so that's, you know, I, I talk about, I talked, we might've talked about this. I don't know. I think I talked, I don't remember. I know I talked about it, but like with Weaving Fate, Weaving Fate was a different book. Um, and then even though the practices were the same, how they were explained and everything else changed as soon as I kind of got that metaphor and kind of linked it to the action of the Norns in the field, right? And then at that point, I could see the whole thing like, oh, okay. So now at this point, it becomes a coherent whole. 
Mm -hmm. um, and then you can, then for me at least, I go back and rewrite and go, okay, what was I trying to get across here and how does this really fit into this? And so things get moved, things get, you know, reworded, metaphors get shifted. Um, mm -hmm. And to me, that's a big thing. because it's how, I think it's how there's, you know, we kind of think in story and we think in metaphor as yeah. far as the stuff that really touches us and really moves us. Um, and so I think that you have to, I think all of us, especially as magicians, have to kind of find those that work for us um, and, and that speak to us because that can become like a guidepost because it contains, it can contain a lot of depth um, in a very simple uh, image or symbol, as you said, or mm. kind of phrase even. Um, and so that's, yeah, that's a big part that comes from the allies and is also kind of a hunt with me is there's big sections in the book that have got kind of like filler terms mm. uh, until I actually know what that is. And usually that's the thing that clicks and that's the point where you go, okay, we actually have a book right. um, that is going to be useful because now I can see how to talk about all these things. Mm -hmm. uh, before then it's just Kind yeah. of data retrieval onto on onto the page of like okay right, right this works for this this works for this this works for this we got to figure out a way to talk about it it isn't <laughs> fucking boring as shit <laughs> it's not helped with uh making it useful you know um one of the things that we spoke about last time um certainly was a lot of kind of the the in-depth work that you did with your uh, your allies uh, throughout your life and mm -hmm. uh, become a really a key moments um uh and i i know i mean i think when we were we were we were chatting that um you know that you you were saying you were getting a sense from the allies even even when we were talking about kind of um the conversation we were having kind of some of the kind of the we were hitting on some 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 some, some um uh, good stuff and so mm -hmm. some really interesting points and uh, i was reflecting on 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 that show um kind of in preparation for for catching up again and i was also kind of reflecting on kind of conversations uh that i had recently with with uh douglas on, on what magic is this mm -hmm. you know, he was on spirit box and i was on, on on his show and we kind of had a big a big long chat um you know big big broad soup of ideas and 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 kind of you know but ultimately kind of around what around meaning you know and, mm -hmm. and kind of what what has meaning for you you know and and uh so on on, on what magic is this we talked about um self-transformation you know and becoming something else you know and, and whether that was the point of magic whether it wasn't the point of magic whether it was kind of like a a, a sidecar or symptom of magic you know and 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 reading through your work i i you know ultimately i can it, it doesn't really matter you know but but i think one of the the things that i get from your work is that at the end of reading this at the end of practicing this you know it's very clear that the ultimate goal is to be in a better place irrespective mm -hmm. of the technology or the devices you use to achieve that you know right and i think that's really important you know and i think that's where the, the again i keep coming back to this word the the depth is is in it and i and like and I, and I don't use that word you know cheaply because i think it, we're talking about getting into the deep core of oneself mm -hmm. you know in in a, in a very magical sense you know um and i and i kind of wanted to ask um how much of that is working with the allies you know oh for me it is it, it, a lot of it has been um but i think it's because that is what i was after um it's not like they said you got to do this mm -hmm. um because that's not how it works for me yeah. um and so i think <laughs> to use like a term from new thought that is not my favorite term, but um, it kind of came up. And so it's why it's in my head is there's the idea of having a, whatever it is like a, I can't even remember what term they use, but it's like a, you know, like a primary chief goal, right? For me, that is it. It is kind of, um, I want to be well um, in this world that 
is not conducive to that in my opinion mm -hmm. um, and i want more people to be well as in in this world that i don't believe is conducive to it right mm -hmm. now um and so that is kind of my overriding interest mm -hmm. um and even when i kind of um in in kind of both six ways in weaving fate there's a way that i let that just be subtext to the degree which i think that that's critical i don't want to hammer people with that because it's not necessary but um and so for me the allies are that's where they step up the most because they're like okay if you want this you have to be different mm -hmm. um and i think we talked about some of the changes that were yeah. that i experienced yeah. kind of yeah. at, at the psychic hands of my allies um in the last one um and that's what that's about and it and that it, those experiences also kind of reinforced my belief that magic is a really brilliant tool to do that to ourselves because mm. um, i think it's it's not like it's um yeah it's like i've never really kind of bought into the idea of that we're kind of like transforming to a higher state or something like that it's like no this is just who we are we're just kind of really fucked up right now mm. as a species more of us than not um and i think that magic is a can be a tool to undo some of that um and that's to me the most interesting thing um and so again kind of talking to about that idea of questions and this is something that i'm talking about more explicitly in the book that i'm working on is to me the first question i think it's what i just refer to as the question um, and many people will have different takes on it but to me the question when you do a piece of magic and it works is what does this mean about myself and what does this mean about the world that i inhabit and do i need to reframe and redefine those things now um, because if we're coming in cold that we don't have any of these experiences and we start to have these experiences we can just kind of ride the experiences and let them go where they will um, and that can be good and it can be bad uh, and you've been around enough people probably who mm. have interest in this stuff that you've seen both sides of that yeah but to me, if we can kind of take that responsibility to go, okay, what is this, given what this does, what's the best use of this um, for me right now? What's this, not what's this for in a global, I'm gonna lay down the law about what this practice is for, but what's the, what's, what does it consistently do well that leads towards that kind of improvement of, um how we experience being alive and being human mm -hmm. um which to me then kind of directly goes in because i'm an animist and because i'm a spirit worker sinks into where am i uh how can i better show up for those aspects of the world mm -hmm. um and it's not, you know, and I've had, I've had some nasty emails saying like, well, you should be more political with this stuff because that's what's the most important thing right now. Mm -hmm. And I understand that perspective and people shouldn't assume that I'm not doing those things as well either. Mm -hmm. But to me, pragmatically, we've lost in the West, at least this very critical connection that would allow us to be well. Um, and I think that magic is a brilliant tool for that, but it's not often framed that way. The, the philosopher John Mayorty, um used to say a lot that kind of the, the West is dead because we've got no more stories to tell, mm -hmm. you know, and, and interestingly, I think that's a bit of a feedback loop into, into your work as well, because it, it's, it, it's telling stories, it's teaching people as well to tell their own story, to, to, to rewrite their own story. I, I'm sorry, I'm projecting onto your work saying that, but... but uh, That's absolutely, we, that is absolutely, yeah. right. yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but um, you know, as a culture, we, we've run out of stories. As a culture, we've run out of a lot of things, you know, we, um, and, you know, I, I was first drawn to uh magic and kind of or really exploration to to because i couldn't believe this was it i couldn't think i couldn't 
conceptualize this is why we're here for these things you know that's then felt transient and without meaning for me completely and and was a a a a source of deep 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 rooted unhappiness mm -hmm. you know and i blamed a huge amount of that unhappiness on society on the constructs that that you um already you know talk to in terms of like it's a sick society and we are sick living in it you know mm -hmm. um and then you find something that tells you that well actually this isn't reality reality is is, is something completely different you know and mm -hmm. you might get that through ethnogens through, through magic or, or, or through, through various other areas you know and i think one of the problems we often hit with you know and this is where i re again with, with, with your work but it's, it's not forcing dogma on anybody you know it's, right because you can get into magic and you can find a lot of the same constructs and, and kind of issues just dressed up in different ways, you know, which I think can be very defeating for a lot of people, you know. Um, yeah. So I, I think that, that freedom of, of writing your own mythology, writing your own story, you know, is, is really important. I think that's, again, where the, a lot of the potency is in weaving play down six ways. You know, um, and I think I, that's and for me, that's very that's very much my view is I like if we can view it is on, on very many different levels, which is we can view it on individual kind of psychological issues. Right. Mm -hmm. Where you go, OK, I was raised in a certain place, certain time by certain people. And because of who I am structurally, right, who I was is kind of the blank slate. Some of what happened fucking sucked. <laughs> right it doesn't mean that it would have sucked for somebody else in there because sure. if they'd been wired differently yeah. it would have just rolled off of them right yeah. but stuff stuck right yeah, yeah um and we all have different stuff that sticks and so this is one of the things that people can be really just fucking horrible about online as you go yeah well i'm i got i got beat every day and i came out okay and it's like yeah, well good yeah. for you yeah bully for you that's, yeah that's great <laughs> <laughs> this poor lady that was not her experience and she's yeah. still in it 60 years yeah. later right so let's talk to the reality there yeah. um, and so knowing that that stuff is going on to me that's like one of those like i'm always looking for um like what's the best solution to this and this could be a relationship with my wife with co-workers with the world in general mm -hmm. and often i have to go okay i have this chunk of embedded mythology <laughs> right which i'm using is like clearly fabricated story right mm -hmm. that is part of it was handed to me by people x or situation x or culture x and some of it was then embellished by me based on my own experiences and what i end up with a lot of the time is this really calcified story mm -hmm. that says my life is like this because I am like this and the world is like this, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And so to me, one of the beauties of magic is it can give you a really direct way in to go, okay, what doesn't work about that? We mm -hmm. don't care about truth here. <laughs> Different outcomes. Uh, and uh, that is like a... To me, that's almost like the definition of ritual, right? Ritual is a story. Mm -hmm. um, we may not think of it because it may not have a, a kind of narrative arc, like a piece of fiction or a movie, right? But we're going into a space if we're thinking magical ritual and we can use something really simple, like, you know, that most people know, which is like the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram, right? And we do this thing that centers us in the space that we call the middle pillar, right? Um, and then we begin to state that there are these features around us um, and that these are related to particular energies. Um, and then we see it in kind of anthropolo anthropological looks of so-called primitive societies and stuff where they go, well, they're telling this story of how the, whether it's a creation story or how some kind of healing power came into the tribe or things like this these are tools that allow us to have those options <laughs> that makes sense and like you said i think in the west we don't have any options uh, like all of that stuff has been removed 
and the options are like, you're poor, you're middle class, you're rich, you're super rich, you're Jeff Bezos, right? Those are the, those are it, um, which is incredibly limiting um, and incredibly damaging. And so a lot of the stuff that I suggest is like really change that shit. You don't have to rely on that. Those are made up things. Those are not the structural nature of reality. Um, and so if that is not working for you, you got to get in and pop the hood and change the motor. Yeah. Right. Um, and to me, that's, that, that's what magic's all about. Mm. I, I, I think that, that, uh, that concept of what you're saying, that these are made of things, um, mm-hmm. like that, that is of such cultural importance for people in terms of kind of what they're swimming in, you know, in that mm-hmm. kind of, in that, in that state of kind of realization of, you know, the economy isn't real. Like the, mm-hmm. our gross domestic product isn't a real thing. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, it's not to say they don't have impact, let's say they don't have power, but they're not real, you know? Um, mm-hmm. And those realizations for, you know, or people start to really deconstruct their world, you know, um, and that that ability to then kind of understand well, what's real for you mm-hmm. can really, really have a kind of a, an, a personal apocalypse feeling and really kind of shift people, shift their headspace. Yeah, and then the, the and then the other thing that the the next book it goes deeper into this than weaving fate or more directly into it than weaving fate. Though weaving fate is kind of heavily invested in this stuff too. Is um, who we are as kind of a personal identity is equally unreal. <laughs> yes. Um, the and so this is something that can be changed mm. and uh, and uh, you know so weaving fate is a one approach to it. What I'm working on now deals with some others. Um, and in a sense, it's kind of like a lot of this stuff is uh, to me, it's pragmatic information. It's like, okay, I have story I have a story about who I am that I'm telling myself all the time, and that is totally constraining what I do in the world. It constrains what I think constrains the words that I speak, constrains the words that I won't let myself speak. And all of that stuff is, again, it's, it's story, it's synthetic. Um, and so, you know, you quoted from somebody earlier, and I think that that's really true. And I think that part of what I want is like, if we can get in again, kind of get under the hood and start changing those stories for ourselves, that puts us in a place where we could tell better stories mm. about how we move through the world and what that could mean. Because yeah. we don't really have good things. So like, you know, there's, we see this all the time and this is absolutely not kind of putting down activism because activism is critically important. Um, but if we're always just fighting the structures that have been imposed on us, we don't get to tell the new story. And that's a really cr- critical piece. And so for me, that's my focus mostly is like I want individuals to be telling different stories so that they can then tell individuals different stories um you know because for me some of the biggest things that I the biggest shifts in my life came about when I came across somebody who was at least in that moment and in that space much wiser than I was who said are you sure that that's real are you sure that's what's going on Mm-hmm. Or you know, tell me your your history about that thing, and go. How do you know that all that information is correct, or that it's even valid? Right. I talk about this, and I think both books about true enough is way more important than true. Uh, right. We want true enough to be useful is mm-hmm. the thing we're after, and so if we can get kind of um, kind of yeah, if, if we can kind of change the metaphors that we're using about our world and about ourselves in it, we get entirely different results um, because there are these huge constraints otherwise. Um, My uh, friend Fabiku is who turned me on to kind of uh, 
really kind of pointing head on at the concept of doing identity work in magic. And one of the things that he said that really stuck is he said, if you don't do this, then you're running on whatever your default identity is. And for most people, it sucks. <laughs> you know, it's not good. <laughs> uh, most people don't really have a sense that they are sovereign and empowered and that they can think whatever the fuck they want to think. Mm -hmm. And not in a hostile way, just that it's okay. It's okay that I think what I want, I can share it if I want, I can keep it to myself if I want, I can have an opinion if I want, I don't have to share that. Um, I couldn't share it. Um, but that they're really self-contained within that knowledge. I know I wasn't for a huge part of my life. Um, yeah, I can relate to that. And at the point that that started shifting, everything else started shifting. And I began mm -hmm. to, again, be able to see a very different big picture mm -hmm. and really go like, okay, like we are talking about GDP and all of that stuff. You go, one of the, uh, this kind of came out of a, a meditation se session that I had. And I was like, um, it's when I was um, in Georgia and um, <laughs> the, the vision that I had was like, oh, you know, it's way too hot for me. I'm allergic to everything. And there's all sorts of nasty biting insects here. But if you turned out the lights, got rid of all the gasoline, and eliminated all the grocery stores, I could survive here. That's an interesting thing that isn't true in a huge number of places on the planet, right? So you can go, not saying this is the most important thing or that you should fixate on this, but it's a really interesting question. Like, okay, so then is what's going on in the social scene really the most important thing if you're living somewhere who if the lights went out and the gas went away and the grocery stores stopped being loaded, you could not even survive in? Or is there something else going on that might be more important? Doesn't mean you have to take that as your sole activity, but it begins to open you up to, okay, how many other of these stories of the most critical thing is what this person on Twitter said about me? Um, can we shift and begin to take that power back um, and go, okay, the reality is I have maybe not economic power, maybe not status power, but actually just within our physical bodies, our ability to move around, our abilities to think and speak, we're roughly equal, more so than not, you know? And so these stories of why and I'll totally be straight up, like, even, th you know, it's like, I am, you know, cisgender white kid from the suburbs who was raised middle class and has never really gone back there after he got out of his house. Maybe I'm getting closer now. I don't know. See, I haven't looked to see what that qualifies as anymore. But um, it's so understand that I'm not saying that in relationship to these culturally imposed things, which are absolutely real and absolutely have massive effects. But why do we think we have less power than anybody else? Why do we hand that over to somebody because of a uniform or a position or a title or a degree? And why do we say that those explanations of the world are more valid than the ones that we might have? Uh, and I think all that stuff is just, you know, that's my activism, I guess. It's like, don't take it. Yeah, I like that. You know, I, I like that a lot. You know, it's like, uh... And, and and again, like when you're talking about kind of someone's titles, someone's position, you know, um, and the, the, there's the effect that has on us, you know, in, in particular roles, you might have um, challenging managers who 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 are difficult to work with, they they push you, or you have those issues where you you just don't gel, you know, mm -hmm. uh, or or you're in a job that's actually just a really crap job and you know it's it doesn't really matter who's in there it's it's not that anybody can succeed There's, you get those jobs that are like how long can you last <laughs> totally right? They're, they're those kind of jobs right you know and and well you have to you know if you don't if you don't if you don't take take the snapshot of that how long can you last rather than this this actually means whether i'm a good person or not or a functioning person or absolutely not. No, those two, those those two definitions can have a long tail. They can have a long, long tail. You know, 
because you might just save that as a reference point of like, well, remember you did that job and it didn't work. You know, right, and I think a lot of the times, and we also don't realize if we're in it, and it's, it's interesting, everybody's got different stuff. So like, mm. I've had friends that are just like brilliant kind of, um, not necessarily tacticians themselves, but they are brilliant at understanding kind of interpersonal tactics. Mm. Uh, particularly in kind of corporate environments, right? So yeah, yeah, way yeah. better than I ever did, right? Because <laughs> they would just be like, "Dude, don't, even. <laughs> you know? uh, don't even go there." Uh, and I would be like, "Well, why?" And they go, "Because there's nothing real there. Mm. Uh, this is somebody who's setting you up. Uh, yeah. You know, that's all it is. And this is the way this office works. And so you're not going to be here all that long because it's not a good fit for you." And so just fucking smile and nod and find the next job because this is not a, this is a toxic environment for you. Yeah. You know, they were, their goal was to get on the board and get rich and retire. Right. Mine yes. was yeah. not, you know, yeah. I was not, yeah. didn't have any of the skills to do that. And it's also like, it is, it's about the, you know, if it's a white guy on TV in a dark suit with a red tie, you're supposed to believe him. Mm -hmm. Right. We know that that's, there's nothing behind it. Uh, yeah. We've seen this has been more proven in recent years all over the world than in other times, perhaps, but it's always been true. It's, um, you know, I respect the police because, at least in the United States, they have guns and like to use them. Um, and it's in my best interest if I want to go through yeah. that interaction to be very respectful. Mm. And I know I'm lucky because I also and white, which yeah. matters here yeah. in a way. Different things would matter in different places, right? Um, but if I take that as a serious thing, if I take even like the legal structures as serious things, other than in the way that they maybe are fucking things up, yeah. like is this actually beneficial or non-beneficial? Does it need to be changed? Again, all of this is like hammered narrative, right? If we look at uh, and I talk about this in Weaving Fate a bit, that if we look at the things that we're supposed to want, most of, of us really probably wouldn't want them if we really hadn't, if that hadn't been hammered through the media, if it hadn't been hammered through these kind of tales of this is what having a good life looks like. Um, and so, yeah, kind of getting a, getting kind of aggressively going after all that storying to me is really critical because and it's funny too, because it's like, I come at a lot of this stuff from a, a kind of hybrid position that I accept on one side of that when we're talking about kind of human psychology and suffering and all that stuff that I'm kind of a Theravada Buddhist follower of that stuff. I don't really think of myself as a Buddhist but because there's ways I'm not after the same goals that are going on there. But it's a brilliant description of what goes on in the world and in our minds, right? And then simultaneously, the reason that I don't consider myself a good Buddhist is because I want to get deep into the guts of all of that and make things different, mm -hmm. right? Which is the magical side. Right. Um, and to me, so much of that has to do with that. It's like, oh uh, yeah, I mean, it's like we're, we're kind of set up in this world to have like really unrealistic expectations and then feel bad about ourselves that we aren't meeting them. Yeah. And that's intentional. Mm hmm Right. I talked about this, I know, with Chao Ku, that you are supposed to feel bad if you aren't making X amount of dollars, if you don't have X kind of car, if you don't have this kind of status, if you don't look a certain way, um, if you aren't skinny enough or pretty enough, right? All that shit. Um, and that's, I think, the other thing that's really important to realize is these are not, possibly in different times of the world, these things were more um organically created right and now they're completely synthesized this is yeah. like lab grown expectations with the intention that you feel bad enough that you will pay to try and improve your position mm -hmm. and that you will eat shit to try and improve your position mm -hmm. in the ways that are acceptable to that situation and to me again it's it, it, all this stuff keeps coming back to the idea that to me this is magic is the most direct path in at so much of this stuff if you kind of choose to point it in that direction uh you know it's kind of like the 
you can use magic as kind of a super bulldozer uh, to break through kind of insane walls that are really hard to do otherwise. And most of those are internal first. Um, you can use it to do it outside, but you'll kind of have to accept that it's a possibility before that works is what I've seen. You got to actually, yeah, it's like, a, you know, I, I, one of, one of my, my few kind of media pastimes is, is uh, mixed martial arts. Okay. And, you know, the Hail, the, the Hail Mary punch only works if you have the power and you know you have it, that if it lands, that guy's going out. <laughs> right? But if you don't believe that, there's no reason to throw it. And you might as well just cover up and let the, the ref stop it, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, don't take the damage. And so mm. the first thing you got to do is figure out how do you get your own head around that you might have enough power to land that fucker, right? Mm. Uh, and so I think that that's the, that's foundational magical practices to me. Yeah, yeah. And then and like that, you know, you've got to build it up. It's like that person who's got that, um, you know, dynamite in their hands. They 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 hit a bag hundred thousand times, you know, oh, and man. you know, and know know what they're uh, know what they're doing with it. Um, and you go. It, it also ties into that whole idea, which is you know, it's it's super popular in kind of the working out world, and then also in kind of the hustling to get rich world. But there is a reality about the grind uh, and about getting in the reps, right? Which is yeah. all this stuff is skill based. Um, and a ton of the storying about it within the community is that it's talent based and it's not. Um, yeah, I, now, I agree with that. Some people absolutely have more natural talent, but if they don't work to develop it, they get to go so far. 100%. Uh, the people that are willing to work to develop it can go way farther than I think almost anybody actually understands. Um, I believe that about myself just because of what I've experienced. I don't believe I ha really have any clue of what I'm capable of at this point. Mm -hmm. um, and so I try to keep a real open mind about that. So when something kicks up and I go, oh, I couldn't do that. You go, oh, yeah, that's an interesting story. Let's look at that one. Uh, you know, it, even if we can't figure out where it came from, because it's not necessarily required, mm -hmm. uh, let's start telling a better one and see if that works. And and like to, to, to that kind of model, you know, how that works in, in my head, um, to, that, to, that, to that sense of kind of what, where, where, is, where is the border of my capability? Mm -hmm. You know, where is the border of kind of, the, I've reached the end of my, 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 my talent slash effort, you know, however I blend those two, I've kind of <laughs> reached the, the, the end of it. How I often think about it is I've reached the end of it for this Sarah. That's how I talk to myself in my head. Totally. My, my, my little weird, you know, internal dialogue. Um, you know, it, it's not a monologue in there. There's, there, there's, a, <laughs> there's a lot going on. Um, you know, I'm like, well, that, this Dara can't. Well, that Dara can. You know, and then I kind of start to build that person, you know, and, and work towards that. One of the big things, though, that, that has been quite important to me uh, uh, and looking back over time, particularly with, with the ideas of what does success mean, what does achievement mean, is um, is the the idea kind of from the the, the Maharabat of um, it's Krishna saying to to uh, is Krishna saying to Arjuna? I can't remember who exactly it is, but they're they're saying kind of you know you have a right to to take the you have a right to take the action, but you've no right to the fruit of the action, mm -hmm. you know? And, and that's the kind of the other side of it as well, is that like, sometimes it doesn't no matter what I do, I'm not going to get there. Yes. But, but that's okay. Once I can start to disassociate myself from that goal, you know, defining my worth is, is a really important thing. That doesn't mean not to try. Because if no, I don't absolutely. try, I've already just defeated myself before I even kind of get out okay. well and i think that's a lot of what we were talking about that's kind of what the programming is right now right it's mm -hmm. like there's there's all of these mixed mess messages right mm -hmm. which is um like in the u.s we have this thing about you can bootstrap yourself to anywhere right yeah. which is not a belief in most parts of the world and never has been <laughs> um uh you know but um 
it is that thing that's really interesting is like you do the work and you have a goal in mind perhaps, but you don't know if you get that goal. But what you do get is you get to kind of push that envelope. You get to find out what that Dara can do, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then you get to reframe and go, okay, if that's not happening, what could be happening, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I do this all, this is something that I've been doing for many, many years, I think really has been going like, okay, I don't like things as they are. I don't like these aspects of myself. So I'm gonna do what I can to change them. Um, and I'm gonna view it very much like you did, which is like, okay, this identity is a construct. So what are the pieces that don't allow me to be different? Those are the first, the most important things. Like, do I think that if I was different, I would no longer be a good person? Um, do I think that if I were different, um, people that like me now would no longer like me? Um, I remember when I, uh, uh, I had a, when I was pretty young, I had a, a variety of drug issues. Um, and one of the ways that I got out of them was that I spent time in a place where nobody knew me and pretended to be somebody else. His name was Carl. <laughs> and Carl had a totally different situation going on. And it, this was, I did not know what I was doing. It came to me kind of out of the blue. It was very early in my magical time. And I didn't really link it as much of a magical act at the time, but it really was, which is like, I couldn't quite buy the person I would have to be to have a handle on that shit. So I needed some people to buy in <laughs> on that deal for me. And so I found some and I became friends with them. And the friends that really would have been the happiest had I kind of dropped back into that and been partying with them more, they found me less interesting. So I didn't get invited out as much. I found it easier to not do that because I could also just go over to this part of town mm -hmm. and be Carl for a bit. Carl only lasted for about a month and a half, I think. Um, I was house sitting in a different neighborhood, so it worked out very well. Um, and so think this was kind of one of those root things is like, what can I do to see myself differently? Mm -hmm. uh, and again, realizing that this is not about truth. It's not about uh, it being a lie. It's about none of those things. It's just accepting that all this stuff is constructed um, and taking you know, control of that construct. Uh, it's kind of like, um, uh, I would, I, it's like if you got to design your character in a movie uh, to do well <laughs> or in a game to do well, right? Mm -hmm. If you got to set that up, what's that person like? Mm -hmm. uh, and then what do they see the world like? Because that's the biggest issue a lot of the time is we really can't see beyond what we're already in. And so some of these things are, yes, mind games, but they're very useful mind games because if your situation was different, if you were not as socially awkward, if you uh, were more confident, if you were more powerful on any level, if you were more empathic, whatever it is you're after, it's kind of like, what would that person do? And then you kind of, this is that, this is where that fake it till you make it bit does come in and go, okay, if I was a better listener, what would happen? Well, I'd stop spacing out on my phone, okay. So I'm not gonna be using my phone anymore when I'm around people, right? And these are like simple tools, but they really do add up. And well, then they if become they authentic. Magic, they, become it is, authentic. They, be, they become yeah. authentic. And then it's also that idea of kind of, um, you know, in, in six ways I define evocation is where we kind of do work with powers to bring them out of us so we can interact with them as if they're outside of us. Mm -hmm. And invocation is where we, Kind of call in powers so that we then operate as that power right and this is kind of that approach too is you go okay if uh if i'm walking through this neighborhood as you know mad max how do i feel uh versus how i feel right now as you know <laughs> 17 year old kid who's fucking scared shitless right um what i was gonna say is so your 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 new title that you're working on now, um, I'm not gonna not gonna ask any questions about about, about the content of that. Um, but when when are you when when can we expect to see that? Or is that I would still, like to have it yeah. out by the end of the year. Right. I don't know. If we'll be. I can never tell how they're gonna go. But right now, it seems like that's viable. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I would like to have it out by the end of the year. I would like to get it out this year. That's tough.
And what's what's next for you? you want to uh, follow you all, all up on the interwebs? Yeah, pretty much that's it. Um, you know, I'm online uh, ever less often as, as I can get away with it. Uh, but, you know, uh, I've been trying to write more blog posts and I've got a big pile of questions to start doing the podcast again. It's been about mm. six months since I updated that. Um, and other than that, it's just writing and enjoying the summer. Yeah. Uh, it's nice that the weather is nice and I'm somewhere where I can get outside and enjoy it without being surrounded by people. So, yeah. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Well, and it's been awesome catching up with you again. Lovely to have a chat. And um, I've, I've really enjoyed uh, our, 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 our catch up and, and our um, meandering chat there. We'll still, we'll never get to the bottom of the question why do billionaires buy super yachts? I mean, I'm sure they're lovely. I'm sure. I, I imagine if, it's a cool thing. Yeah. If I was offered a week on a, oh, yeah, I should probably give it. If someone offered me a week on a super yacht, I'd, I'd say yes. I don't. Th- I don't think I'd. I'd be querying it too much. No. <laughs> no, totally. But I'm not going up to space with any of these guys. Uh, <laughs> space is bad. I've watched <laughs> the movies. It's bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's been lovely chatting with you again. Awesome. Thank you very much, and uh, and hopefully we'll catch up again soon. Sounds good, Dara. Thank you. Well, that was just fucking great. I I, I really loved that. That was a great chat. I, I it's such a pleasure to to chat to Aiden, Aiden to have him on the show. He really is. Uh, he's a legend and a gent. And he dropped some real wisdom there, you know. I think it's such an important, such an important reflection, you know, that your life is ultimately in your own hands. Um, you got to wake up and do it. You know, you got to do some work to to make that happen. Um, are your values your own? Are your ambitions your own? You know, who really are you? These are massive questions. But if you get to answer them, you will change your life so much for the better. You know, and I, I want to quickly reflect before we wrap up. That's not to do down any of the challenges or underestimate the, the prevalence of difficulties in people's lives. I know there's insurmountable things there. I know there's dreadful things there. I know that sometimes we're just hanging on by a fingernail. You know, and I, and I just want to say to people out there going through really hard times, they will pass. They will pass just stay the course it's 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 something i say all the time um and i apologize to people if they find it cheesy or repetitive but i just think it's a really important thing to say to people you know we all fucking hit the the skids at times but those things will pass those times will pass but don't let the situations that got you into those shitty positions remain the same when you have the strength then become who you want to be You absolutely can do that. Again, I'm just wondering how I managed to follow up with that message after shouting on about super yachts. But there you go. That's the kind of spectacular audio experiences you get here on Spirit Box. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to stop talking. It's just getting worse. Take care. Bye.